Hey guys, it's me again. This is a continuation of the video I started earlier. And uh, I have to get to the gym, so I'm gonna hopefully condense this into 20 minutes. Hopefully 10. Uh, so anyway, um, I ended up my last video kind of talking about um, Gosh, now I'm trying to remember if I, because um, I, I started shooting a second video <laughs> and then I had to run to the restroom really bad and I knew I couldn't last so I stopped it and I deleted it. Now I don't remember what I said in the second video which is I'm reshooting it anyway. So we'll have to see. I don't know if I mentioned that um, I was wrapping up the first video talking about the Arnold, talking about the weekend, talking about getting back. Um, so I'm going to tell you two if I said this in the last video, just fast forward. Um, two of the lessons that I've learned, one of them being about water, the second one I'll tell you about my ankles, and then I've got some products here um, that I want to get through, and then I've got to put my polar on and head to the gym. Um, and actually, let me tell Courtney and Deb that I'm not leaving for another few minutes because I said I was leaving earlier. Uh, I'm leaving probably in 30. God, will I be back? No. 20. I gotta go, you guys. Okay, so um, told you I had the food poisoning, all of the stuff, and then I was sick, and then I was kind of nauseated every day. And there were several days when I felt better and I'd go to meet them at the gym, and I had to come early because I come home early because I'd be like doubled over. I'm just nauseated. It's just I kept feeling nauseated for, forever and crampy. And the thing is, is because right after the end of my food poisoning, some of you must watch my videos and go, how many issues can one woman have? Give it a rest. I'm the gift that keeps on giving, <laughs> and I keep on taking issues. Come on, I got you. Come and join my family. Let's just have at it. So. Got the food poisoning, and then right after that, Aunt Flo shows up. So then I had those cramps and, you know, those issues. But several times I'd be at the gym with those guys, and I would be just nauseated again. And so it's just kind of like every day I had to keep winging it. I couldn't really go and, you know, get back to making turkey meatloaf and, you know, the stuff that I eat when I'm dieting. Because <clears throat> the thought of eating anything like that for, for several days was like, I mean, all I wanted was plain mashed potatoes, a plain bagel with plain cream cheese, just plain bready, carby stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, and then I was just, several times I'd get nauseated. So then I remember asking Courtney and I'm like, I'm not gonna take any supplements for a while. Like none of the, the stuff I'm usually, here's my little plan. None of the stuff, I, cause I just didn't know. I'm like, what is still making me nauseated? And then I think it was right before we left for the Arnold. Thank God this woman walked in. And it just goes to show you that sometimes you have to relearn a lesson again and again. And please forgive me if I said this on the end of the last video. I just shot several. Anyway, um, right before we were leaving for the Arnold, the last three, three or four days that I would go to meet Courtney and Deb in the morning, we'd get, you know, probably 20, 25 minutes into the workout, and I'm getting these bad stomach cramps. And I'd be looking at them going, period's over, why am I getting cramping, what is wrong with me, when is my stomach going to feel normal again? And, you know, I would usually have, um, anyway, I, I can't see it, it's, I would usually have a shaker cup that I bring with me when we're doing stairs or whatever we're doing, and I put in my, um, like my aminos, my branch BCAAs or, or whatever, or this BSN stuff I'm taking, um, and I sip on that while we're doing cardio, but I went to the restroom several times and I'd just be kind of doubled over with cramping and I'd just stand there because I didn't want to get back out there to the gym because it just felt like this intense cramping in my stomach. Well, the last day I was there, this woman walks in and she's like, you know, she's really sweet. She's like, are you okay? And I started, of course, telling her my whole life story <clears throat> about the food poisoning, about my <clears throat> period right after that. And I said, I just keep getting these stomach crampings and she goes, have you been drinking water? And immediately I'm like, oh crap. It immediately hit me that what was happening with my stomach and the really like it's in knots cramping is exactly what I learned end of last summer and clearly it wasn't 
sinking in this time in that um, if you watched my videos last summer, you remember I would go for runs. I don't like to eat before I go on runs, so I'd have an empty stomach and I'd drink my, um, I was using that Pro Sculpt from GNC at the time, and I'd go for a run and I'd get about a mile and a half out and I would get this severe cramping again, just like I had it at the gym where, where it's like, you don't know if it's, it almost feels like, ladies, you can probably relate, and a cross between am I not feeling well and I have to run to the restroom or is this that time of the month cramping, that kind of cramping. And I would get about a mile and a half out and I'd walk it off and I'd be breathing like <sighs> going, what's wrong with me, what's wrong with me, just let me get home. And yet then I'd get about a quarter of a mile away from my house and be totally fine. And I'd be able to run. And it wasn't until we went out to Under Armour headquarters and Chris Welsh put us through a really intense circuit, same thing happened to me again. And I, I had to run to the restroom and all these people were waiting for me, it was really embarrassing. I came out and he's like, what's your deal? I told him the situation. He's like, how much water are you drinking? And Jamie's like, all she's had to eat is Diet Coke. And I'm like, Jamie, seriously? <laughs> but it was the truth. And I'm glad she said it because he's like, you can't, you've got to hydrate. You, you have to, especially if you're going to do empty stomach, you have to have water because you're, you know, your body can only take so much and you're, you're pushing it too hard and it's resisting. Sure enough, after I learned that, the more that I started to hydrate, and usually what I do is I take this cup of water every night, I fill it up before I go to bed, and I sip on it before I go to bed, and then when I get up, even before I have my coffee, I just start chugging filtered water. And I realized that after having the food poisoning, probably because of the memory of drinking water and it made me throw up, I haven't been drinking water the way I used to. Um, I've been so focused on just eating what my stomach can tolerate, that I'm probably still left over dehydrated, or I was. So um, once I realized that that was happening again, I've started chugging my water. So that said, I've got my water <clears throat> and I'm getting ready to hit the gym. Now, <clears throat> what did I learn about my ankles? So excited. So again, to rewind, those of you that might just be watching one of my first videos, um, it was the end of last summer that I was running, 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 and I love running. I'm not marathon girl, I just really enjoy running. Especially running outside when it's warm. Um, of course I bought all this Under Armour heat gear, or cold gear, and it's been so freaking freezing, beyond freezing, that it hasn't been safe, not only with the temperatures, but also with the ice, to go running outside. But I really like running outside, and I just like running. Um, putting good tunes on and <clears throat> getting a great run in. So. Um, about September, I think, is when I would go on runs, and then the back of my ankle started to hurt, where I felt like I was just needing to stretch it out. And um, then, you know, I ended up, it, it just didn't go away, and I didn't know what, what I had. Never really had a, a big injury. So I asked some of the folks that are on my uh, Fit Financial Advisory Board, and they said, you know, here's the deal, you're overtraining, you do way too much, you know, of your, your kickboxing and jumping around DVDs and plyo and running, and you're probably not stretching. And, you probably have an Achilles issue, based on where I said the injury was, or the, the, it, the discomfort was. I don't want to say pain. Um, so they said, you've got to stop all of your running until you get it checked out. They sent me to somebody local who's this uh, Mark Crabtree guy, and he's a strength and conditioning coach. And I went to see him, if you remember, and he did a, a movement assessment to see you know, how I could move, if I was blah, blah, blah. And he said, you know, I think what you needed to do is for at least, I think he said two months, two months, you know, you need to stop running. We need to start focusing on some serious stretching, um, blah, blah, blah. And then we changed my training program. We changed my training program to have no cardio and to have just five days a week this, these metabolic circuits, which I did enjoy. Um, but then there was this time, you know, side note, I'm telling you why the end of the year was frustrating for me. I kind of didn't have a diet plan and I really felt out of sorts not knowing how to eat for the five days a week versus what I was doing before, which was seven days a week, several times a day with yoga. I mean, I dramatically changed my activity. And even though the metabolic circuits are intense, you know, I was asking some of my people to give me a diet for that, and I, I really didn't know. I didn't know, should I be at 1,500? Should I be at 2,200? Should I be at 1,800? I had no idea, you know, and, and I was kind of waiting, and sometimes, I'm not firm enough when I ask people, so I probably should have been like, I need to know what I'm eating. 
more so than whatever. So there was a time period where I was in limbo and I was doing, you know, the circuits and long story short, I remember by like November, um, getting down to, to Florida and just, I could feel, I put on my workout clothes to go. He finally said, okay, you can go and start running. And I could see that I got thick around my middle. I gained some of the weight back and it was so upsetting and so depressing. And I just got really down and blah, blah, blah. And, um, so that was the end of last year, and then I had to really tailor. I started running again, and then it started to hurt again. So then I had to tailor back. And long story short, again, it's never a long story short with me. Um, after every time I would start running, I'd get to a certain point, and then I'd start getting the pain again. So I'd have to like come back, and I remember going, I don't think this is ever gonna go away. I'd be wearing compression socks, I'd be stretching, I'd be doing all this stuff. And I'm like, I, I just don't understand. Am I gonna have to deal with this the rest of my life? And, you know, it was frustrating because I felt like nothing that I liked to do, I could do. Well, then the beginning of this year, you know, it was great because I, would, I go to the gym with um, Courtney and Deb. And, you know, I do like doing a lot of these cardio machines. I like the stairs. They've showed me a lot of new cool machines that are all low impact. And I was able to do that and not have any pain. Well, there was one day that I couldn't get to the gym. Came home and I thought, I want to do, you know, I want to get a sweat on. It's probably a snow day or something. And I put, what song is this? I don't know what song this is. Anyway, so I came home and I put a, a DVD in and I did, you know, something like kickboxing, one of my old kickboxing DVDs. Immediately, I got like halfway through it, immediate pain in my ankles and all of that. So I was like, is this ever gonna go away? And um, so I knew that going to the Arnold, um, I had talked to Dr. Prisk, he's an orthopedic surgeon, and I had talked to him via text about this situation. He's like, look, I wanna refer you to my friend. You need to go to this guy in McHenry, who's an, um, you know, also a colleague of mine. He'll x-ray you, we need to see you know, what's going on. Because he had asked me to take a picture of my ankles and where it was hurting, where the pain was. And when I wrote him back, he said, you know, it looks like you could have tendinitis or tendinopathy, something like that. And I was like, and I remember he said, you could need to have surgery if this is what you have, based on where you said the pain is. And um, this is itching, dry scalp. And so I still hadn't, um, I can't tell what song this is, it's really bothering me. Whatever. See how easily distracted I am? So I was really bummed because I thought, he had said, if I have to have this surgery, that I could be potentially out for like several weeks or months. And I was like so frustrated because at the end of the year, you know, to make such amazing progress with my body and my fitness goals and my weight loss goals and my muscle, you know, gains goals, and then to be kind of sidelined and then potentially be looking at being out for three to six months with surgery, I'm like, God, it's such a tease. My life is a tease. I think I know what song this is. Anyway, so I meant to go see this guy for x-rays before the Arnold, but I ended up not going. We go to the Arnold and I sat down with Victor. Actually, we were in the middle of the restaurant at the hotel while we were doing this. And it's amazing that I wasn't embarrassed or feeling awkward about, you know, pulling up my sweatpants. And he was basically doing an assessment on my ankles there. And it was the coolest thing ever. I just think the ability for a doctor or a surgeon or whatever to, to look at how you, you move. I, like, when I see this now that he was able to diagnose me, I'm so frustrated that I didn't do this like end of last year. But anyway, he did this um, test where we were sitting down and he had me, um, I don't know, he put his, like if this is my foot, he put his, his arm or, or hand or whatever and he's like, push against my, push up, you know, push against my fingers or my whatever. And then he bent my foot back to see how much it could go up and down. And based on my foot, my leg being straight and my leg being bent and how much my, I have no idea what song this is and it's on my iPod. Um, I feel like, did somebody take over my iPod? Anyway, he was able to see and I'll hopefully maybe do another video or something. It's, um, it's not my Achilles, and it's not the part of my ankle that we thought. It's actually, I'll see if I can show you this. It's the vein. I'll have, him, I'll have to have him text me what it is. 
it's the little like vein that goes up there. Basically, it's all tied again to my calves being way too tight. He goes, your calves are jacked. They're so tight. And he, and he kind of demonstrated why. He knew it was just the back of my calves, not the front and the back of my um, legs. But he basically said, what you need to do, he goes, your calves are so tight, they're causing pressure on this vein. And because of that, you know, then everything else is being affected. And I'm like, do I have to have surgery on that? And he said, no. And I'm like, Eureka! And I said, so this is fixable? And he said, yes. So he showed me this series of stretches, which again, I'll see if Courtney or Deb can uh, video what I have to do. So I have to do these stretches three times a day. It's essentially taking my front leg and leaning it up against a wall and then taking my back leg, which is the calf that I'm gonna be stretching. I have no idea what this song is. So here's my two legs. The one goes up against the wall straight and then the back leg is here, kind of tilted in. And then I lean forward with my front leg so that the knee touches the wall, which brings my back leg, which is straight. And I'm stretching that back uh, calf I have to hold it for 30 seconds, breathe through it, and then do it on both legs five times each, three times a day. Um, all of that, I mean, how interesting is that to know? This song is pissing me off. I don't even know what this song is. Anyway, it just sounded like static. So I have to do that three times a day, and apparently that can then allow me to wean myself back into running. Pretty amazing, huh? I'm at 16 minutes. Um, crap. I'm going to give you a preview of two things I'm going to show you in my next video. Crazy compression socks. And I'm going to tell you about more about these freaking awesome Apera bags. But that said, I have to go to the gym because Courtney and those guys are waiting for me. And I have babbled on for close to half an hour. Got to go. Have a great day. I will see you later.